Today is uh, Thursday, July the 11th, 2024. And uh, yesterday I, I probably got to meddling with you quite a bit. I'm praying the Spirit of God will direct you because how we sow in our children and grandchildren's life is going to bring forth a harvest and I want you to have the best harvest possible. So let's go back to our text in 2 Corinthians 9, 6 and Luke 16, 8. As we talk about this third area, which is, in my opinion, very important in our sowing and reaping principle. This I say, 2 Corinthians 9, 6, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Now I've intentionally chosen not to talk about finances this week, even though I think in the context of 2 Corinthians 9, this is as surely as that discussion. But I think the start of it is God's not going to be mocked whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. So every area of my life where I'm sowing something, there's going to be a harvest from it. Luke 16, 8 says, And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of life. So I want to talk about relationships today. It's just huge. Relationships. So one of the greatest resources of our life is the relationships that we develop with others. And obviously that starts at home. And so parents, I want to talk to you about this because it starts in the house, spousal relationship, parent-child relationship, and then depends on probably proximity, but grandparent involvement in our family. And then it moves out from the house to the career or job into the neighborhood maybe before that. And then also, as I'm speaking mainly to believers, into the church. Whether that's a small group or a large community that you may be just attached to only by attending a weekend service and attached no other way, which to me is rather ridiculous, but you need to be involved with relationships in the church with people at that church you're attending. And here's what we need to understand. We are to guard over and superintend all the relationships we have. Now, I know that in the career, sometimes we have not a lot of control over the relationships of the people that work with us. As your kids do not have a lot of control of the relationships because of who's attending the school they go to. And that's both Christian and non-Christian, by the way. There's some bad eggs in Christian schools, just as there are in public schools. So if relationships are going to be rewarding, we must guard against anger, rash judgment, harsh responses, resentment, bitterness, and revenge. And that kind of sums up the places that we have to guard against in relationships. We've got to be kind one to, one to another. We've got to love even our enemies. And that's got to be just demonstrated, particularly in parental things, so our kids get to see us living out our faith, the example of our love for Christ, manifest in how we treat and, and act with other people. So we're to model basically the Sermon on the Mount, which I'm not going to walk through in verse chapter 5, 6, and 7 of Matthew. And that real precious scripture that I alluded to already in, in the book of Ephesians in, in chapter 4, verse 23 through 32, which I do want to take just a moment to read here now, where it says in chapter or 4 of Ephesians, in verse 23, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole, steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Did you catch that? Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. 
and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as, as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Wow. Powerful scripture. Take some time to read that again today, if you will. To nurture healthy relationships, we've got to develop some people skills. We teach those in our home. And when our grandkids come to our house, grandparents, we're helping them with people skills. You say, well, that's a lot of work. I, I really just want to play with them. <laughs> I know. I know. You say, I raised my kids. And you're never done. So we need to learn and help our children and grandchildren learn to think through the other person's eyes instead of always remaining self so so self-focused in the relationship. The Bible teaches it like this. It says each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others in the Philippians 2 4 in the NIV. Having healthy relationships at school, at work, at church, in the neighborhood lends to less stress. And by the way, more enjoyment out of our life. Pretty key, isn't it? Pretty key. It also fulfills God's plan to move us toward loving our neighbor, whoever or wherever they're at. And by the way, our neighbor is anyone that we meet who's in need or who's doing well. Sowing properly in the realm of relationship brings great blessing to your neighbor, your classmate, your fellow believer, your spouse, your children, your sibling, all the way around. So parents, I want to ask you, are you setting a godly example for your kids in this area? Do your children see you enjoying and entertaining relationships with people whose lifestyle is as anti-Christ and ungodly as one could be? Is that the people that the relationships your kids see you having? And do you know who your children are having relationships with? Are you sharing relationships with other healthy, godly families? Have they ever been in your home and, and you have time to pray together? Oh, that's a novel thought. Better still, do you know who your children's friends are when they're not at your house? That not only includes the neighborhood, it includes the school, and it includes the church. Huh. I'm sorry to say this, but there's some real bad eggs who attend church faithfully. My 60 years of preaching the gospel in the local church setting has evidenced that sufficiently. As a parent, you may be able to control the environment of your home, but you are less likely to control the environment of a children's ministry or youth ministry. Don't fool yourself. The law of sowing and reaping is everywhere, including the church, and bad company, the Bible says, corrupts good behavior. That's the word of God. I'm, I'm a firm believer that the home is the place where disciples are made. The church is secondary in that process. I hope you catch my drift. Mom, dad, grandma, grandpa. We make disciples in the home. Parents and grandparents own the responsibility to pray, teach, instruct, disciple, discipline, and live godliness, purity, and holiness before your children and grandchildren and be their refuge and fortress against the forces of evil in our culture. And the church is there to back you up but not do your job for you. Okay, I'm laying it on heavy this week. This stuff is deep in me. What we sow, we reap. Father, help us. Father, help me. I'm a grandpa. My kids are grown and gone. Help me, God, to be the best I can be in doing what's right and holy and pure before my children and grandchildren. And I'm praying for those who are listening to this video that not condemnation, but a conviction to do what's right be all over us. 
and know that we have the help of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to do this right for the glory of God. Amen. Grace and peace. Have a great day.